Now I'm going to write down all the formula for all the mathematical questions that you can attempt from the section of thermal physics. So from, from the section of thermal physics you need to memorize these formulas. Alright, so the first formula is when you have to calculate or find uh, specific heat capacity. So in the question of specific heat capacity, you need to use this one. Small c represents specific heat capacity. So not only you have to use it to find specific heat capacity, matter of fact, out of these four things, if two things are given, you can always find, or uh, three things are given, you can always find the third, fourth one. The second one is for heat capacity which doesn't include mass but it, because it's not for per unit of mass it's for whatever the amount of mass is given is the combined heat required for that whole mass so specific heat capacity is kind of a price per kg like the price of uh, one kilogram of bag of rice but the heat capacity would be whatever the amount of rice is given what is the price of that whole bag of rice so this will this will be different for a same material depending on how much how many kilograms of that material you have but the specific heat capacity would be same if the material is same no matter what whatever the amount of material is third one Specific latent heat. Of vaporization. And the second one is the same one. Specific latent heat but for fusion. Then you have Once again, the complete formula for pressure, volume, and temperature is this one. P2, V2 over T2. Now, using this formula, you can find any of the quantity provided the others are given. So not only you can find pressure, you can find volume, you can find temperature. In this uh, expression or in this formula, the mass of the gas is constant. Mass of the gas is constant so this formula can be reduced to p1 v1 equals p2 v2 and if you're using this one then mass and temperature both would be constant they can ask you this question separately in this, uh, they can give you an equation like this one. We just solved a question like this. And they can ask you what two quantities are constant. Also, this formula can be also used as P1 over, sorry, uh, generally we use that V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. And if you use it that way, in this case, mass and pressure of the gas has to be constant all right so it can also be used with pressure and temperature but generally um, not only generally but you don't get questions in which you have to relate pressure and temperature if you get a question like this you can still use p1 over t1 equals to p2 over t2 but in that case we uh, also add a limitation that mass and volume would then remain constant 
the next one we have is temperature in Kelvin equals temperature in Celsius plus 273.1615 but uh, your slavers demands till 273 so this is the formula for conversion between Kelvin and Celsius scale Kelvin to Celsius or Celsius to Kelvin in the first one generally when you have to find the specific heat capacity or the energy required for that process you use the formula E equals M small c delta T but in many of the questions the energy is not given the value of energy is not given rather they give you the value of power of the appliance power p in watts and they give you the time for the use of the appliance in minutes or in hours they rarely give you give you the time in seconds if you, they give you the time in second that's even easier so in that case your formula is rearranged as instead of energy you write power times time but when you're using this formula you have to ensure that the power should be in watts and the time should be in seconds in some situations the rate of energy transfer is given rate of energy transfer is given transfer is given they provide you with the rate of energy transfer and what you have to find is the time it would take for that amount of energy to be transferred so for that one you use the same formula p into t equals mc delta t so the rate of energy transfer is given in joules per second so in that situation what you have to do is you need to first calculate how much energy has to be transferred to the object for melting for boiling and to or for changing its temperature energy that is required or energy that is released during a temperature change or phase change can be both of them so i'm just writing energy required or energy released for what cases for temperature change in which we use mc delta theta delta t or for phase change in we use in which we use e equals to ml so we find the total energy by using that formula this is the energy required and then we divide that energy by the rate of energy transfer something that would be given in joules per second so if they say the rate of energy transfer is 100 joules per second and the total energy that you need is let's say 4000 joules in how many seconds the object will receive the required energy so in this situation all you have to do is find the energy first once again i'm saying that energy can you may uh, you might be needed to calculate that energy by e equals to mc delta t or you might be needed to calculate that by using e equals to ml so it might be a ch phase change problem or it might be a temperature change problem depending on the situation but once you have calculated the energy you divide that required energy by the rate of energy transfer And what does that give you? It'll give you the time 
in seconds in which that process of transfer of energy would be completed so this is a variation and you mainly get this question in paper one in mcqs these are the set of formula that you can use for thermal physics